And welcome inside the WOSN studios. Time for another edition of Mark's Madness. Joined as always by Mark Shine. I'm Matt Finkel and Mark. Before we get to high school basketball, we've got plenty to talk about, of course. Noticing your tie, the Ohio right. State Buckeyes, we've got to congratulate them. First ever college football national champion, playoff national champions. Playoff champion. I'm, I'm a Buckeye guy, of course, and in my world, the Buckeyes are national champions. The Bengals, Steelers, and Ravens have lost. Life's good. <laughs> Life is good. <laughs> yes, Life is, is good. All right, let's talk high school basketball okay. now. We've got three undefeated teams left, LCC, Rushi, and Defiance. Yep. And I think they're all playing at the top of their game right now. We've got some big games this weekend for a couple of those schools. We'll get to as the show goes along. One of which we don't talk about is the Rushi Raiders. They're ranked third or fourth in the state if you like the polls and those types of things. But they can score, and they're tall, and they're good. It's a good weekend for the Rushi Raiders. They get the Mississippi, no, I'm sorry, Tri-Village on Saturday night. That's a big game for them. Bluffton and Grove were undefeated entering last weekend, but they both lost. And one of those games, Bluffton, Lost to OG. OG had a pair of big games over the weekend. Let's start with the Titans. Where, where do they sit right now after their weekend against Salina and Bluffton? Well, I think after the Salina game, they were like, wow, we got blitzed by about 20. And that was down at Salina. And Salina, of course, is very good. I, I would think that Salina might have been the favor going into the game, but perhaps not by a 20-point margin. But then they come home to the undefeated Bluffton team on a Saturday night. Bluffton, of course, uh, had played very, very well. We'll talk about some balances things with their team a little bit later on. But a really good bounce back win for OG. And quite honestly, Bluffton kept the game close for most of the game. You get the feeling that a lot of these teams can beat each other on any given night. Yeah. It kind of just what, you know, what plays out on the court. In this case, OG over Bluffton, you know, if they met again, who knows how that one might turn out. You know, in our conferences now, we're playing 22 basketball games. Then you get a non-conference game on Saturday night. You're never quite sure what's going to happen. Big crowd, of course, over at OG. As always, a good win for the Titans. Another interesting non-conference matchup from Saturday was St. Mary's Spencerville. Spencerville got the victory, but something that you pointed out, an interesting point, St. Mary's and Bluffton, kind of similar paths this year in that they weren't on a lot of people's radar, but they're making a lot of noise. You know, both teams last year, I think Bluffton was 9-13, and St. Mary's was 10-12. and They had some guys coming back, but you didn't know exactly how good they were going to be. Both of them off to very good starts this year. Each of them have four players averaging between about 10 points and 14 or 15 points. Each of them had three different teams or three different players lead their team in scoring. Each of them had three different guys who can make three-point field goals. So it's a really kind of an interesting concept how similar those two teams have played out their seasons. LCC, one of those undefeated yeah. teams we just talked about. The Holy War on Sunday <laughs> against Elvis right. St. John's. It's always a fun game. LCC came out on top to remain undefeated. They're also the top-ranked team in Division III. Well, it was a really difficult weekend, I think, for St. John's. They went and played Coldwater on Friday night and really struggled down in Cavalier country. A big win, of course, for Coldwater. And then to come back on Sunday and play at home against that undefeated LCC team. They did so without Odin Weller, who was out with the flu last weekend. You have a major component missing from your team, and then you try to play Lima Central Catholic not a good thing. Of course, Central Catholic's playing without Jake Williams. Uh, he's got that shoulder situation, which is kind of a week-to-week -week type thing with him. So a good win for the Thunderbirds over at Delphus. And prior to that, they had beaten Grove, who also fell off our undefeated ranks. What are, what are we thinking about Grove right now after this weekend? I think it was a really tough weekend for Coach Dex Schulte and Grove. Of course, they, they played LCC on Friday night and expended so much energy right. that they came back Saturday night, did not have a lot in the tank, lost to an improving Fort Jennings team. So a really difficult weekend, I think, for Grove. Look for them to bounce back maybe this weekend, but a tough game for them coming up as well. And that just speaks to your point about before. Usually you have, in that case, it was a non-conference game on Friday, but the back-to-back -back Friday to Saturday nights, especially with most Friday games being in league, by Saturday yep. there's it's tough to have a lot left. Matt, I think that's especially true, you know, when you talk about Grove, when you talk about Lipsick and Pleams, they're trying to play in two different conferences. Right. And of course, as you mentioned, LCC a non-conference game, but a lot of emotion involved with that game. Then to come back with a PCL game on Saturday night against Fort Jennings, a, a hungry Fort Jennings team that didn't play on Friday night, difficult for Columbus Grove. Defiance in the Western Buckeye yep. League, they're undefeated as well, and they had an overtime victory over Finley. So Defiance now, we're looking forward to a big game coming up for them, but they're playing really good basketball right now. They really are. Of course, we always talk about the Singleton and how well he plays for them, but Smitty had a big game against Finley on Saturday night, so they're getting a little bit more balanced. So did Detwer uh, have a big game on Saturday night. So they're getting some more balance, and of course, they're always very solid defensively for Coach Lehman. So we'll talk about their big matchup coming up in a little bit. Let's move to Perry, though, now as we continue to whip around. Perry doing a lot of scoring over the weekend, 86 and 91 points yep. respectively in wins over Waynesfield, Goshen, and Hardin Northern. On Tuesday night, 63 in a victory over Corey Rawson. 
there they are. And of course, this is a team that's really on a roll right now. They started the season one and two, but they're on an eight game winning streak right now. They're, they're scoring a lot of points in that winning streak. They're scoring over 75 points per game in their eight game winning streak. And they really get up and down the floor. Uh, Gardner scoring for them. And of course, we know Poling set to what over a thousand points earlier this year. And he's mm -hmm. averaging about 22.9. Good three point field goal shooter. Lane Harvey averaging almost 17 points per game. So they really get up and down the floor. Gardner had just three points last night. They still put 63 on the board. So they can really score points in a conference that looks like it's going to be dominated by a couple, three teams. Absolutely. And all those offensive weapons that Perry has, it's exciting. But let's transition to defense now. We don't always talk about defense that often on this show. We should, probably should more, but we're going to show you some good defense here from Crestview. Mark Schein called the game. Yep. Crestview, weak side defensive help. Let's take a look at what they're doing. Well, Matt, if you're going to play for Coach Best, you better be able to defend and not only defend your man, but be in help situations too. Now, they're playing Dolphus Jefferson here. Of course, Smith and Stockwell are just such good scorers. Watch how they help off down inside. Three guys go to the ball, one of whom knocks the ball out of bounds with good help. The next one's going to come a, a little bit different type of situation. Here's that uh, play, and it's going to go, uh, here comes weak side help to knock it away from the back side. Good leaving your man to go help in that particular situation. So really good interior defense. Of course, it finishes with the basket in transition and the foul, but it all set up by the good defense at the other end of the floor. Take one more look at yeah. that. Just the entry pass and then leaving your man on yeah. the far side to come help there, and that's exactly what creates the turnover. Well, I'm sure Coach Smith is going to say the ball was in the air just a little bit too long, but the backside help was very, very good that time. Now let's take a look at some offense. Miller City running a zone offense, yep. and tell us what's going on here. They call this short corner. You see the guy right there with his back to the basket, back to the baseline. He's called the short corner guy. He catches the bass and then finds his teammate in the middle. He plays with his back to the baseline, 10 to 12 feet off the lane. Here he finds his teammate in the middle of that zone who spins into the lane and scores. Then we're going to get a second look at it, this particular offense, this time from the other side of the floor. And this time when it occurs, they leave the, the short corner man open. And that'll give him a jump shot from the baseline that we're going to catch right here. They pass inside, kick it back out when the defense collapses. And again, he's in that 12 to 15 foot area, using the short corner offense to perfection, that time by Coach Kuhlman and Miller City. Inside and then back outside for that baseline jump shot from that 12 to 15 foot area. So it kind of gives you two options depending on what the defense does. It allows the players to react and it's a nice little play, nice little offense to set up, find the openings. Well, the short corner is in an interesting spot because he's not in the corner where the baseline guy would typically jump out and play, but he's yep. also too far outside for the middle man to guard. So he really puts a lot of pressure on, on a defense when you run that. Really interesting to see and break down what some of the teams are doing both on the defensive side and on the offensive side of the ball. So we're going to get to some girls talk in a little bit, but first let's break down upcoming games that we're looking forward to. It seems like each conference, this might be a little of a stretch, but like each conference has a marquee game. And we're going to start in the MAC with Versailles versus St. Henry. Versailles and St. Henry. Versailles uh, uh, averaging 68 points per game on the season. They give up about 52. St. Henry, 59. Give up about 45. Each one has a marquee player. Uh, Mike Self for St. Henry. Kyle Arns for, for Versailles. So I'm looking to see who else steps up. You know, who, who becomes the next guy to, to, to take some of the pressure off? Is it Stallman? Is it Kneekamp? Is it Pranger for St. Henry? You know, is it Bargy? Is it uh, the other Arns, perhaps? Yep. Um, is it McEldowney? Somebody needs to step up for that particular side, but that's a great matchup early in the conference season in the MAC. Going to learn a lot about the yes, MAC after that one. The NWCC features Perry and Lehman in a, in a good one. Matt, that score might be in the 80s or 90s. They both can run it teams, up. Yeah, yeah. They just get up and down the floor a, a tremendous amount. Lehman, uh, we don't get a lot of coverage for Lehman up in our area. Averaging over 72 points a game. They've been up in the, they get 81 against a good Rushi team. So it'll be a shootout type basketball game. And they really get up and down the floor. The following week is uh, kind of an opposite in contrast. USD and Lehman play the following week. But those are probably the three best teams in that particular conference. And we'll see what happens with a big shootout game this week with Perry and Lehman. Speaking of best teams in the conference squaring off, with no disrespect to OG, WBL features Salina versus Defiance this week. We're really looking forward to that one. It, it really does. And for the second consecutive week, Salina gets a home game against one of the top teams in the conference. And, you know, that big win over OG last week, that was a very important win for them to hold serve at home. But if 
if Salina, and there's six guys who can score and six guys who can make things happen, if they can defeat Defiance, they're really in the driver's seat throughout the rest of the conference season. Obviously, you've got games left to play. You've got to worry about upsets, but they will be in the driver's seat. OG and Defiance still match up later on. Right. This is one of those games where they look at, we can really put ourselves in position to claim that league title. It really is. It's kind of early in the season. You know, you'd like to have these types of games in mid to late February when everything's kind of played out, but this will be a, a position to put Salina uh, in a spot to win the conference. And we've seen that with the WBL before. Remember last year, there, there was uh, everybody had one right. loss for a little until we got to the end and, and they played each other out. And don't just play defiance. I mean, that win that they had with Finley the other night and their defense is so solid. I mean, they've got, uh, what, eight games where they've given up 40 or less. They gave up 50-something to Finley the night, but had to go two overtimes to do so. So defiance and their defense is outstanding. they got a marquee player in Singleton. Good, good basketball game. How about in the BVC, LB and Van Buren? That's an intriguing matchup. It really is. I think Van Buren's a team that's really been coming along. If you follow what they've done recently, they were kind of disappointed with how they played through the Christmas break. And I think Coach has some real serious practices and a little bit of conversation, perhaps a little man-on-man -man conversation, and got his team together. They've been much better defensively. They're very out outgoing uh, defensively. They really get after things, get on the floor, get loose balls. We've seen LB. They've kind of been the class of the league for a long time. Obviously, new coach. That's a really interesting matchup. And now this is where I said it might be a stretch because LCC versus Crestview is a very intriguing game this, this week and for a lot of reasons, including that they're both defending state champs. And we're yep. lumping that in with the <laughs> NWC because LCC used to be in the NWC. Of course, they're independent now. But this game has everything you would want in a high school basketball well, game. They had some huge matchups that we've seen before. Each team with a really solid point guard. Um, both teams really defend well. And then I think LCC is a little bit more transition oriented, but Crestview can do that as well. It's a really interesting matchup. Then if you're the Thunderbirds, you've got to turn around on Saturday night and go to Versailles and play. So they've got a huge weekend for Lima Central Catholic this weekend. And they could use Jake Williams back for they this really weekend. Could. We'll see yeah. if he returns. Yeah, that, that shoulder situation, and, and from what I understand, talking to some people, you know, he could heal up from that and be fine for the rest of the season. It's a situation where it might roll out again at any point, too. So he's got a kind of a tenuous situation. We'd sure like to see Jake on the floor for the rest of his senior year. Looking forward to Friday and Saturday for boys' games. Yep. But first, Thursdays, a lot of girls' games. Oh and we haven't talked too much girls yet yep. here on this season of Mark's Madness, but there is a lot of good area girls' teams. Let's start with the MAC because three schools in the MAC really stand out to me. We're talking about Marion Local, Versailles, and then, of course, New Knoxville. New Knoxville. And yeah. we can't forget New Bremen. They're 10-3 yeah, exactly. as well. So four schools in the MAC really playing good basketball. I have not seen uh, New Knoxville yet, but I know they have a win over Versailles. And if they beat Versailles, they're good. I've talked to some people who said they've got a lot of athletes, and they really use those athleticism and their athletic skills a lot. I'm looking forward to see how that plays out this weekend. But New Knoxville can get up and down the floor. How about Bath? Bath had a win over Ottoville on Tuesday night, and they're now 10-1 and one on the season, probably the cream of the crop in the WBL. Yeah, they do. They play Wapak this week, and that'll be an interesting kind of chess match because Wapak would prefer a little bit slower pace. Bath just runs and runs and runs. As, as we talked about prior to the show, they played Defiance Saturday, and their first 16 points were transition baskets. I think 18 out of their first 20 points were transition baskets. The other thing I noticed about uh, the Wild Kittens is Bree Smith is playing now without a knee brace on. We know she had surgery in the offseason. I thought she was a little bit tentative early, but if she is confident enough to take that knee brace off and play without it, that's just one more cog that Coach Mock, uh, Coach Mock has. Five seniors on that team. They've been playing together for a yep. long time. They seem very comfortable together, and and great leadership. When Alyssa Manley steps on the gas pedal, they're off. They're in transition. I, I think a couple times I've seen her force the action and maybe go a little bit too hard, but I think you'd rather have that and try to slow them down than the other way and try to speed somebody up who doesn't want to play at that pace. She scored eight straight points in the fourth yeah. quarter of Tuesday's game against Ottoville and really Pull, help Bath pull away when Ottoville was bringing it back close. Yep, she, she's a talent, but she's got a lot of talent around her, and she's also ability to pass the basketball and find people who are open. The interesting thing about them is they not just take layups in transition, they'll shoot threes in transition too. You really got to get back and defend everything. The BBC is kind of a crapshoot. Four really good teams. We'll flip a coin. We'll yep. flip a couple coins. <laughs> I don't know. I'm LB, Arlington, Arcadia, Lipsick, a lot of good girls. Yeah. playing basketball in the BBC. I think that's going to be, you know, we've talked about maybe uh, the, the NWC and boys and how it's just going to be kind of a up and down. Who knows what's going to happen with that particular thing. I think the BBC and ladies may well be the same thing. You could throw a net around all those guys and come up with a champion. It, it's going to be just a shootout season. Well, we've got a lot of good basketball for you to look forward to on WOSN this weekend. It starts with a girls game, Parkway versus Fort Recovery, Friday at 9 p.m. That's a good MAC matchup, one of three games you can see Friday on WOSN. Friday at 10.30, Van Buren versus Liberty Benton boys. 
And then Friday at 1044, following the sports report, New Knoxville versus Marion Local Boys. Should be a good yep. MAC matchup there. Four games for you on Saturday, 7.30, Collada versus Fort Jennings boys. I heard you're yeah, on the call for that's that. That's where I'm going to be. Looking forward to going to Fort Jennings and see that. I saw them play a couple weeks ago against Ada. They're a revitalized team. Very good, and Collada is always competitive yeah. as well. Saturday at 9 p.m., Crestview versus LCC boys. So that one will be played Friday. You can see it Saturday at 9 p.m. on WOSN. Saturday at 10.30 on WTLW after the sports report, Finley versus OG boys. I feel like OG is always in big games. Like They always yeah. have tough opponents. They, they don't mind playing people. You know, yeah. They want them to have the best schedule they can in the Western Buckeye League and out just prepares them for tournament. And then Saturday, 10.30, Wayne Trace versus Delphus Jefferson, boys. Two more games for you on Sunday, LCC versus Sales. That match we talked about yep. earlier, that can be seen Sunday at 6 p.m. Sunday at 7.30, Salina versus Coldwater, boys. Also some college basketball. Check out the website, WOSN.TV, for the full schedule, including the replay times of all the basketball that we can bring you. That's going to do it for this edition of Mark's Madness. Thanks, as always, to Mark Shine. I'm Matt Finkel. We'll see you next time on the West Ohio Sports Network.